Hi, hello and welcome in our video. In this video we will be talking about links and this is the first of multiple videos about this topic. My main goal in this video is to explain why linking... So what are links? Links are used to represent a relationship between artifacts. In requirements management applications such as Doors Next, links are essential for establishing traceability by creating associations, relationships and dependencies between requirements. Therefore, by creating links, we are creating traceability and providing visibility. I mentioned traceability a couple of times. So what is traceability? Requirements traceability is ability to describe and follow life of requirement. And you can follow it in both forward and backward direction. So you can follow it from origins through its development and specification to its subsequent deployment and use and through all periods of ongoing refinement and iteration in any of those phases. If you have at least basic understanding about requirements management, then you probably know that high quality, well-written requirements in a single application that can act as a single access point to all engineering information and that therefore also as a single source of truth is extremely important. But what I am trying to say in this video is that it's equally important to have visibility across the engineering lifecycle and all relationships in order to successfully manage complex projects. And I really cannot stress it enough how linking is important. It is absolutely no secret that inadequate traceability is an important contributing factor to software project failures and budget overruns. So it really is an extremely important part of the software engineering process. Using linking, we can ensure that all of the requirements have been adequately considered during each phase of the project and that there aren't any scope holes in the developed system due to some missed requirements. I will now try to list the most important benefits of links and therefore of having traceability and visibility. First and foremost, with links, we can ensure that every requirement has a business purpose, that each requirement directly tied to initial business needs. With links, we can show that everything within the system serves a defined purpose and has a goal and therefore has justification for its existence. Also, we can ensure that every requirement is tied to a deliverable, so it's forward and backward traceability. To ensure that all of the requirements and use cases have supporting test cases that will validate the functionality works as expected. To ensure that safety critical standards are met and evident in a compliance audit. Also to ensure that all product quality requirements are met throughout the entire complex development lifecycle process. To ensure that the requirements remain current on updates and changes that ripple through levels and have upstream and downstream effect to the product. And last but not least, to improve impact analysis, to gain valuable insight and understand the full impact and true cost of proposed changes, as well as information how those changes can ripple through the complete life cycle. So this is my compact overview why I think that links are probably the most important part of any requirements management process. All right, jumping to the door's next specific topic. I already said that links represent a relationships between artifacts and we use different link types to describe different types of relationships. As you can see on the screen, project templates tend to have an extensive list of predefined link types. We have many different link types so we can define and customize many different relationships between artifacts. When creating links between artifacts in a requirements management application, you can create your own custom link types. Therefore, if you have very specific kind of relationship between artifacts, you can create this very specific link type to describe this relationship. As an easy example of very different link types may be satisfies and mitigates. You see right away that it's very different relationship between artifacts because when you are using satisfy, you are trying to tell that one requirement satisfies some higher level requirement. For example, system requirement satisfies stakeholder requirement. When you use mitigate, however, 
you are trying to describe that one artifact mitigates the risk or some vulnerability described in a linked artifact, so in linked higher level artifact. You see, there are vastly different relationships between those artifacts. It is also important to know that a relationship between artifacts is directional. You see up here that we have relationship labels and we have outgoing link and incoming link. It can be probably best described on link link type. So outgoing is link to and incoming direction is link from. We will be using link, satisfaction and maybe embeds link types probably the most. They are predefined here in this template and they are probably the best understood and pretty much self-explanatory. There is just one more thing I would like to cover in this introductory video. When describing why links are important, I often mentioned lifecycle. So not just requirements management lifecycle, but project lifecycle or even a system engineering lifecycle. That means that I am describing also linking outside of requirements management application into the quality management, change management, and also architecture management. There is, however, a big difference between links in requirements management and links to another application. And the big difference is that although you can create your own custom link types in requirements management, so you can describe your own custom relationship, you are not able to create custom link types to another application. To link artifact from requirements management with artifact in another application, you already have predefined link types and you are not able to change it. Let's now find out what link types are used to connect artifacts from requirements management with artifacts in change management application. So first is very first here, affected by. So this is relationship between artifact and some work item that affects the implementation of a requirement artifact. For example, it can be defect. The second link type between RM and EVM is implemented by. So this is relationship between artifact and work item that describes the implementation of the requirement artifact. And the last one is tracked by. So here almost at the end, this is relationship between a requirements management artifact and item that tracks the implementation of the requirement artifact. But in this situation, it can be plan item in the CCM application that can track the implementation of this requirement artifact. So those were three link types that are used to connect RM with EVM. Now let's continue with QM. So uh, relationship between requirements management and quality management. We have only one link type here and it's validated by. So again, this is relationship between requirement artifact and a test artifact that validates the implementation of the requirement artifact. Or maybe in better words, it's relationship between some requirement and test plan, where there are some test cases that validate the implementation of this requirement. The last relationship is between requirements management and architecture management. And we have four different link types here. The first is derives architecture element. And this is to capture the relationship between a requirement artifact and model element. The second is very similar and it refines architecture element. And this is relationship between a requirement artifact and design element. Third link type is satisfy architecture element. And this is relationship between a requirement artifact and an architecture management item that represents a model of the requirement artifact. And finally, the last one is trace architecture element. And this link type is used to trace the relationship between a requirement artifact and an architecture management item that traces the model element to the requirement artifact. Okay, so just to sum up link types. Link types are used to represent different kinds of relationship between artifacts. 
In the requirements management application, although you have many system predefined link types, you can also create your very own very custom link types to represent your super custom relationship between artifacts. But as soon as you would like to connect artifact from a requirements management with some item in a different application, so again, for example, architecture management, EVM or QM, you need to use one of predefined link types. There is no opportunity to change them or to create your own link types to represent different relationship between artifact in requirements management and artifact in some other application. All right, so this is the theory behind links. And I know this may be one of more boring videos because there was no hands-on action and working in a requirements management application, but I really think this is the most important video in a series about links. If there is just one thing you should know is why links are probably the most important part of requirements management. If you got the idea that links really are the integral part of a requirements management application, or a requirements management process, then I think my mission was accomplished. I really hope this video was informative for you and I am looking forward to see you in our next hands-on videos.